two dudes with attitudes, let's go. It's the two dudes and the attitudes ruthless, aggressively speaking, so let's do this. We're riding and denting, they here to get your attention, the five-star broadcast shit, start to the ending. Whether it's the E or it's all the E, the two dudes with the attitudes will bring the heat. Get the point, yeah, it's on, time to lock in. Listen to the podcast, where they get it poppin'. It's two dudes with attitudes, a wrestling podcast with Ryan enjoys wrestling and the heartbreak dude Denton. And this is our WWE week where we are talking all things SmackDown, Raw, NXT, the draft. And we got some backlash going on that I didn't even know about until Ryan. <laughs> I, don't think w- I don't think WWE oh, knew there was backlash this weekend. <laughs> like they did say because they announced two matches on Smack on Raw, right? No, SmackDown. What's Solo on? Solo's on Raw? SmackDown, yeah. SmackDown. They announced two matches back-to-back, I think, on SmackDown. Uh, Yeah, they did. Yeah, they announced two matches back-to-back. So I guess just through SmackDown into Raw. Watching Raw, I don't even think they... They brought it up at the very, very end, I believe, that they were like, oh, by the way, tune into Backlash. But we'll get into that and why the draft is a mess and in the way throughout this broadcast. So, But are you ready? Do we have... I don't think we have news, right? We have just some... We have some confirmation, but not really news. But Drew oh, McIntyre, oh yeah, he's, that's right. Yes. He's not going anywhere. So all the rumors of he hasn't resigned his contract and he's going to AEW, that was all a bunch of BS because he mm-hmm. has resigned with the WWE. Um, there was a Instagram video where the Rock presented, uh, or the Rock's people presented Drew McIntyre a sword um, mm-hmm. while Drew McIntyre was out at a restaurant and congratulated him on signing his new WWE contract. Um, and then on the Pat McAfee show, Drew McIntyre said that he was never leaving WWE and the delay in signing had had to do with his um, his family and doing right by them. But he uh, indicated, he, yeah, yeah, he was negotiating, but he indicated that he was never looking at AEW. He was never looking at any other wrestling organizations or ever leaving the WWE. He, he trusts in Triple H. I'm trying to find the exact quote that he said, but um let me find it real quick, but oh shucks! I thought he was going to AEW with Seth I know. Rollins, and Becky Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, yeah. Triple he, H uh, can't resign anybody, so that's what I heard. So it's just yeah, like, but uh, no, he uh, he is he is staying staying put, and he wrote something on X, and I'm trying to find it, but um, let's see, where is it? Come on, it's around here. Anyway. He's staying. Yeah. Um, that's. I mean, he basically just said that he trusts in Triple H, and um, he's looking forward to the future with the WWE. And yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, and Finn Balor's also re-signed with the WWE. I think we talked about that last week. So, you know, two big names that were rumored to be on the outs are staying put. And next on the list is Seth Rollins and and Becky Lynch. But I think it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to re-sign. Here's the thing, right? And I don't even understand why this is the debate. I I don't understand why WWE nut huggers and AEW nut huggers argue about this. If you're currently in WWE, you're not leaving unless you get released. There's no chance. It's not happening. It hasn't happened. The end. If yeah. you were in New Japan, Impact, somewhere like that, you're probably going to go to AEW because it's more of your cup of tea. I don't understand why people thought we talked about this on the show. I never once thought Osprey, Okada, any of them were going to go to WWE. We, I was like, not. I, there was no inch of. I don't know why. There's the X is just so such a stupid site where people oh, yeah, talk. Oh yeah, it's terrible. But why would why would Osprey go to W? It just it doesn't. You don't fit. It doesn't make any sense. So. Yeah. I don't see anybody. And don't get me started on Adam Copeland. That guy was already done with his. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you're retired, ready to end, and you want to go to AEW so you can do whatever the hell you want, then sure. But that's yeah, not... and he even he did a podcast this week too, and basically confirmed that he was like, "We were at the end of. Uh, I was I did everything I could with WWE. They did everything they could with me. I wanted to be full time. They wanted me to be a special attraction. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was just we just." Didn't agree. We didn't see eye to eye. No, no hard feelings. So he ended up going to AEW. I don't know how that dude is still in AEW. If I would have given a rah rah speech that supposedly Tony Khan <laughs> told me to go give, and then every inch and second after that, he's done nothing but shit. Oh on the yeah, 
Woo, because I'm sure we'll talk about his dumb comment tomorrow. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But so, the, the quote from yeah. Drew McIntyre on X was, I trusted Triple H when he brought me back in 2017, and I trust him now to lead the evolution of our industry. Here's to the future, and he has the handshake emojis. So Nice. He is, cool. Drew McIntyre is not going anywhere. Duh. Well, and, and really quick, they did, I saw something with Bully Ray, and he said that, being in WWE, it's like a complete, and I know everyone's going to be like, because he's a paid, and you don't understand that he's a freaking, he's not. He can go anywhere the heck he wants. Yeah, he can and do whatever he, even he said, wants. He even said he would go to AEW and Russell if they wanted him to. He'll go anywhere. He doesn't care. But that he said just being backstage at WWE, it's like a complete different place. It's not even the same place. It's it's happiness and awesomeness and organized. It's not chaos or not rewriting scripts one second. Be It's like a complete different place. So people are going to realize that. The only bad part is, to be honest with you, is that, we need AEW. So we'll get yeah. tomorrow and if Dynamite's turning it around and stuff like that. But we need AEW. We can't have no AEW because as soon as AEW, if they did go away, WWE is going to go right back being crappy. I don't even care if Triple H is in charge. It's just how it is what it is. When you don't yeah. have a position, you don't have anything to work for. So they need to be around. So okay, maybe if we just get rid of Tony Khan, life will be better. All right. Because AEW is not the problem. Swerve and all these guys throwing shots aren't the problem. There's only one person who's a problem for yeah. me. All right. You ready for the SmackDown? Yeah, let's get into it. Draft edition. The draft night one edition. I'm going to give the recap, and then I'll go through the picks. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's let's go. Paul Heyman states that Roman Reigns has withdrawn from the draft because he won't be around for a while. Womp, womp. AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes have a contract signing. They don't fight, which is probably a first in history, but they bring up Cody's dad again. Okay. I love me some Dusty Rhodes, but Dustin, you are, but Cody, yeah. we need to like, you, we yeah, need another good off. Yeah, let's be done with this. Carmelo Hayes challenges Cody Rhodes to later tonight. LWO defeat Legado del Fantasma because they're still wrestling, but not for long. Santos Escobar shows footage of Carlito jumping Dragon Lee. If you don't remember, that happened seven months ago before a pay-per-view. <laughs> and then Carlito jumps the LWO and runs away in pants that were going to rip because they were tight, bruv. Braun Breaker wins in 15 seconds, like my sex life. The bloodline has arrived and Solo is still dressed up. And he's mad that they haven't been drafted yet. KO jumps him and Tonga from behind. Bianca says her and Jade will win the tag titles. Uh, outcome, Tonga and KO to brawl. Solo joins the battle and Randy Orton makes the save. Tiffany Stratton and Naomi end in a DQ. And after the match, Nia Jack puts in work. And then Tiffany does the prettiest moonsault again on Bailey and Naomi. The Street Profits tell A-Town Down Under that they will be the tag champs next week. The Final Testament attack New Catch Republic and promise more violence. Bailey versus Tiffany versus Naomi and Bloodline versus KO and Randy have been announced at Backlash. And in the main event, Cody Rhodes defeats Carmelo Hayes. And in our draft picks, we're going to go SmackDown. They drafted Bianca Belair, Carmelo Hayes, Randy Orton, Nia Jax, L.A. Knight, The Bloodline, AJ Styles and Andrade in that order. Raw went with Jay Uso, Seth freaking Rollins, Braun Breaker, Liv Morgan, Ricochet, Sheamus, the Alpha Academy, and Kiana James before dragging off. And that was in order. And that's SmackDown in a nutshell. Oh, what man. You got? Where do we begin? Um, okay. I want to talk about Cody and then we'll talk about the draft, I think. But all right. I think those are the two keys. Yeah. 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 Uh, I agree with you. They need to they need to stop with the Dusty Rhodes references. I think it's we, we're done with that. The whole finish the story. That yeah. story's <laughs> finished. It's finished. I he he was doing it to win the title that Dusty never won. Now mm -hmm. this is his time to do his thing. Now, I will give Cody Rhodes credit that he didn't bring up Dusty Rhodes. It was AJ Styles that brought up Dusty. Same and thing. No, it is. Yeah. It is. It is. But Cody kind of kind of changed it. He said, mm -hmm. you know, I appreciate what you said about my father, but when I sign this contract, it's going to have C-O-D-Y in front of it. And basically saying, I'm carving my own legacy, and mm -hmm. you and I have never touched, we've never met, and this is going to be... You know, I can't remember what the exact words were. But, oh, he said it's not a dream match for me. It's it's a must win. So, which I, was a I, shot, right? Yeah, I, I think it had not a dream there. match. Yeah, not a dream match. Yeah, it, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I am tired of the dusty references, and they got to mm -hmm. stop. Um, I but I know I saw a lot of people dogging on this uh, this contract signing because there was no nobody went through the table, nobody got attacked. But 
I actually I actually appreciated it because it was different. It was different than what they've done in the past. Not every contract signing has to end in a vi- in violence or somebody getting a pen sh- stuck, you know, <clears throat> getting their hand st- stabbed with a pen or anything crazy like that. So mm-hmm. I, do- I I liked it. I liked what AJ had to say. I liked what Cody had to say. But do please stop with the damn mm-hmm. Dusty Rhodes references. I love Dusty as much as anybody. And it's it's incredible how much of an impact he has had on so many wrestlers across WWE and even in AEW. But mm-hmm. please, no more Dusty Rhodes references. Like Cody Rhodes is his own person. He's got the belt now. This is Cody Rhodes' time. Let's let him let's let him shine and let's stop having him live in Dusty's shadow. I fully agree. And uh, and this SmackDown and Raw to me were just not it. Raw was worse than SmackDown, but we'll get into why both these episodes, in my opinion, suck. But I had one good thing from both of them, and this was my one good thing. I don't know why everyone crapped on it. There's one thing I hate about contract signings, that they had to end with a table being flipped, someone oh, yeah. ref- someone beating somebody down and then signing the contract, whether it be in blood like swerve or so. I'm just so over contract signings being like that. It's so dumb. I'm also just over contract signings because – <laughs> why do we only see them every once in a while? Do all the other? I know. Things? I can't. Why can't it just happen like, normally backstage does, uh, like a normal human? Yeah. Did Jay <laughs> Jay Uso and Damian Priest they have a match on Saturday uh-huh. at Backlash? Mm-hmm. Do they have? A, do they have to sign their contract backstage? Do yeah. They yeah. Even, yeah. Do, do they even yeah. really sign contracts for these? Uh-uh. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do they? I've always wondered that. And and if you are, are you really going to sign Ricochet? Like, is that like a in yeah, like is, is that legal? Official... Is that legally binding? <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought that too because I see it like CM Punk because I'll show it sometimes. I'm like, yeah. what is yeah, that why real? You... And like you you signed it without <laughs> reading it. Like you don't even know what the contract entails. Oh, no. Yeah, that, you... they did something like that once. Wasn't it like Triple H with Batiste? Something like that once. I remember they signed it and then they were like, <laughs> you didn't read the thing. It says that like I could like no dq but you don't or so i forgot yeah. what it was i know brock lesnar did it he signed it with and he was like you know i i didn't i already read your damn contract this morning with my legal counsel paul Heyman, and when brock was oh, yeah. with roman but yeah i know that yeah yeah but but, but yeah, yeah the co- yeah the dusty thing too we, we'd have to like here's the thing who doesn't love dusty everyone does i love dusty when he wore polka dots and vince was trying to bury him that's like still an amazing like dusty did no wrong he was great at booking he was great as a human great as a father great as a wrestler great as an entertainer the end we all know that but cody was people were upset that his whole story was based on his dad now he's won the belt and he's still talking about his dad i mean here's the thing i don't think cody's run has been awful it just started but i can see why people unless they're just being stupid because they love roman which is also dumb because you love roman doesn't mean you can't like this is fake it's not like being a cowboys and a and a giants fan like this yeah, isn't yeah. like that too sport. Can't. this is yeah, you, this blasphemy. is freaking yeah a hundred percent right <laughs> like you if you i wouldn't even date a 49ers, i wouldn't even date fans, a 49ers yeah. fan like you can get out of my <laughs> face with that but uh, but you know what i mean so it's it, it i get that but this is wrestling like cody and roman aren't real rivals and real there it's <laughs> fake people this is script so i you can't say that but but no i know yeah script blah, blah, blah. but I get why people can find it boring because he hasn't really wrestled. He is just talking about his dad all the time. He is cutting the same promo over and over and over again. He is wrestling a guy that people said there was no story behind. So I get that. I get why people are crapping on it. I'm for it. I like what he said. I like that he said that this is just me, you. We're going to handle this. We don't need to fight now. I dig it. AJ closed the show by staring at him after that awful match between him and Carlo Carmelo Hayes. So I'm all good with all of that. I just, I don't know. Yeah, know. but 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 once again, this episode did feel flat, correct? And the reason why it felt flat was because of the draft, right? Yes, so, the draft was so go ahead, get into as, it, and let's as excited as I was about this draft, they completely shat the bed, in my opinion, because it was it was terrible. First of all, you had all these rando people making these picks. Um, mm-hmm. Cody Rhodes made the first pick of of course. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah, that I know. So dumb. With with Triple H, like just standing uh-huh. up there, and he's course, John Triple Cena. H- I'm telling Triple you, Triple H gave his little speech about the draft is the time for the future of the WWE to like. Okay, like we get it, we get it. And then you, and then they the first overall pick is Bia- Bianca Belair, which who's already on SmackDown, by the way. Yeah. So your so, first pick wasn't even like the future of yeah. No, no. Now their first, their second pick the first male overall was Carmelo Hayes. And um, I mean, the first overall pick to raw was Jay Uso. 
And then the next pick for SmackDown, the first male selected was Carmelo Hayes. And I didn't, I didn't hate that pick because again, you're looking at the future. You're looking at the, you know, the overall, you know, if you're drafting somebody, you want to get the, you're trying to get the player of the future, the the guy that you know is going to be there for the next five, seven years and be your, be your face of the franchise type thing. So I didn't hate the pick, but what I hated was they, they picked them and then they immediately fed him to Cody Rhodes. And I was just like, why, why did you put Carmelo Hayes in a match with Cody Rhodes to main event SmackDown? And the match was atrocious. There was botched spots all over the place. That one spot that where they both yeah. were doing like shoulder drives off of it. They, the they claimed it was on purpose. WWE posted it on their TikTok saying like, that's what happens when you think of the same move at the same time. So supposedly it wasn't yeah, a botch. Uh, I, but, but that's what happens when you put two guys together who have never wrestled together, who probably didn't know going into yeah. SmackDown they were going to wrestle and they just have to go wing it. That's tough, man. It's tough to not be able to really game just, plan and think and... It yeah. just it, it makes me question why they selected Carmelo Hayes because you know I love Carmelo Hayes and I think he does have a bright future but feeding him right away to Cody Rhodes and then having him mm-hmm. take a loss on his first night on the main roster I I understand you're not going to have Carmelo mm-hmm. Hayes win that match I get that but why feed him to Cody in general like why not give him somebody else make him have a match with Logan Paul make him have a match with Kevin Owens make him have a match with somebody mm-hmm. else. Not co and I get it's the champion, but you don't see them. You didn't see Braun Breaker going right after Cody Rhodes in his first match on and, and taking a loss. You know they're building him up. Why not build yeah. Carmelo Hayes up? So yeah, I agree. So well, with that said, because I want to break down this draft. So yeah. do you want to just move and just do Raw, and then we'll just break down all picks so we can talk about the stupidity of the draft, or do you just want to go through SmackDown and go to Raw and then we can? Let's because do- there's so. There's just so many issues with the draft that I want to break down, but I feel like I might need Raw to talk about Let's it do Raw. Well. Let's do the Raw recap, and then we'll do the draft all in one. We'll just do all in one, right? Because it's, yeah. And why? And here's the thing, too, right? So SmackDown, there's not much to talk about on SmackDown. Why? Because the focus is on the draft. And then Raw, nothing, real, nothing really good happened. There were some stories that were pushed, but it just felt but fast. It felt flat. Yeah. No. And it felt rushed because of the draft. And now... You're wasting another SmackDown on it. So now you've wasted three shows because they started on a SmackDown. Why didn't they start on a Raw, a SmackDown, and then that following Raw, everyone's been picked, is I don't understand why they did that. Is there a reason? It, I just felt like I think it in, was to we have another it, wasted SmackDown. Tomorrow's going to suck. Yeah, it's going to be. And then Backlash. I hate it for Backlash, too, because that's going to be bad, too. But um, yeah. I think the reason why they did it was so they could compete with the NFL draft that was going on at the exact same time. That's the only thing that that, that makes sense to me. That, but because uh, yeah. the NFL draft started last Thursday, mm-hmm. and then you know, and it continued into Friday at the same time that mm-hmm. the SmackDown draft started, and then it was, took place all week Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday they conclude the draft with the WWE draft. So mm-hmm. that's the only thing I can think of. All right. Well, we'll, we'll yeah, get into that, that because it's not because it's not a draft, and we'll get into why no, it's not. Yeah, a it was draft. terrible. All right. So let's get into Monday Night Raw. Then you ready? Then we can yep. do the draft as a whole. That's a better idea, anyway, because yeah. it's also lost. All right. So Logan Paul arrives with Patrick Mahomes of all people. By the way, really quick, he arrives with Patrick Mahomes. Was that a shot at AEW? because of the stupid comment Tony Khan made. That's what I thought, because he made a dumb comment on the NFL Network, which he then claimed was a good decision because that was pushing his product in a moment. And so then they brought in Patrick Mahomes, the biggest star in the NFL. I thought it was a shot like in a, you can say whatever you want on the NFL <laughs> Network. They not only cut you off after you said the line, but now we brought in Patrick Mahomes, the biggest star to be on our show. Who's winning? Yeah. I saw that as a shot, but maybe I'm I wrong. can see it. All right. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Logan Paul rides with Patrick Mahomes and the Judgment Day. Becky Lynch out for a promo. Liv Morgan wants a shot. And Nia Jax is out to brag about going to SmackDown. Liv Morgan attacks her. We'll probably get a match later. Gunta wrestles Xavier Woods for the 400th time and wins. Logan Paul to the ring and Jay Uso interrupts. They go back and forth. Out comes the Judgment Day. Logan Paul legitimately, it looks like they're real, takes Mahomes Super Bowl rings accidentally punches J.D. McDonough with them, which looks like he really did take the punch. And then Logan Paul ran away with the Super Bowl rings, which I also thought was Patrick Mahomes would have been like, yo, homie, those are my rings. Weird, weird, weird stuff. Uh, And then uh, Braun Strowman comes out to make the save. 
then is going to challenge Patrick Mahomes, who is a bad guy, I'm assuming. I don't know. It was all freaking, I was lost in the whole segment. Our truth makes a deal with Chad Gable, and then Sami Zayn jumps Chad Gable. Bronson Reed and Sami Zayn ends in a DQ because of Chad Gable. After the match, Bronson lays out both of them. Drew is out for a chat. Uh, he talks about CM Punk, and CM Punk is in the skybox. Chad is mad uh, at the Alpha Academy for being like him and never winning. Candice LeRae beats Maxine Dupree in a match that shouldn't have happened. I think it was a minute and 10 seconds. Dirty Dom and Ray have a face-off. Drew is in the skybox, but now Punk is in the ring. Punk tells him they will fight once they are healed up. Liv Morgan defeats Nia Jax. Awesome Truth defeat Alpha Academy in a squash. Damian Priest clowns the Judgment Day for being losers. Damage Control threatened Becky Lynch. And in the main event, Jey Uso, Ricochet, and Andrade defeat the freaking Judgment Day to close down one of the worst Raws I've seen, maybe since the Raw we went to live after WrestleMania a year ago. And draft picks. Yes. Raw. They got Imperium, Dudge, uh, Damage Control, CM Punk. You heard that right. Braun Strowman, LWO, Drew McIntyre, you heard that right, Judgment Day, Dragunov, New Day, Lyra Valkyria, Final Testament, and Bronson Reed. SmackDown picked up Jade Cargill, Kevin Owens, The Pride, Tiffany Stratton, Legato Del Fantasma, Shinsuke Nakamura, dude's on a winning streak, then mm -hmm. Naomi, who's fighting for a title, Chelsea Green, and Piper Niven, pretty deadly. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, DIY and Blair Davenport in that order as well. There were also other picks, but neither here nor there. All right, Raw, what you got? Anything from this show? This, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> this episode was absolutely terrible. Pro like you said, probably the <laughs> one of the, definitely the worst of the Triple H era. Um, uh -huh. Maybe worse than the one we went to uh, after WrestleMania. It was all kinds of bad. Th did you know that this? was like if if you were watching raw for the first time ever as a casual viewer mm -hmm. would you have known that this was the go home show of a big pay-per-view thank you because you have you have backlash on saturday and you have a segment with logan paul who's on smackdown and jay uso who's fighting for the wwe world heavyweight championship damian priest mm -hmm. they're, they're going back and forth trying to out yeet mm -hmm. one another on mm -hmm. the go home show, and then Patrick Mahomes is there as a heel, but he's in Kansas City, so but like that didn't make any yeah. sense. Braun no. Strowman comes out and he's confronting both Mahomes and Logan Paul. But even though, like, what's the payoff mm -hmm. of this going to be? Logan Paul's on SmackDown because he's got the U.S. Championship. Mm -hmm. Braun Strowman and Jey Uso are on Monday Night Raw, so they're never going to touch. They're never going to get those hands, if you will, with Braun yeah. Strowman. So why? Why did you waste everyone's time with this? Just to bring, uh, you could have brought back Braun Strowman in a better way. You could have had mm -hmm. him interfere in the Intercontinental Championship match. You could have had mm -hmm. him interfere and take out Bronson Reed. You know, imagine staring those two guys staring each other down or something. But you, this that that whole segment was a waste of time. And Damian Priest wasn't even out there. Like he's competing no. for the championship, and it's it's JD McDonough in there with Dominic Mysterio, and it was just a horrible. The whole thing was bad. The whole thing mm -hmm. was bad, and that, that looked like a brutal punch from uh, poor JD, man. Like, his face, that looked like it hurt. It was real, so that wasn't fake, right? It wasn't like no, makeup? That was, no, that was real. Uh, so he took, my, I mean, good for him for taking the punch, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But other than that, man, like, there's... And I then, mean, we got, we got forwardness and Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch, I guess. We got... They're the little and, Easter and eggs, Chad too. Gable. Of, of, yeah, the little Easter egg of while Jay Uso was being interviewed talking about mm -hmm. yeet and giving a yeet down and you know yeet 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 oh my in God. in the back you could see Liv Morgan leaving a locker mm -hmm. room and then like maybe 10 seconds later you see Dominic Mysterio walking out of the same locker room so yeah, yeah. my man so the, <laughs> 10 seconds <laughs> my boy I'm so proud um <laughs> but so there's probably something there but I don't know it's, but other than yeah and then Chad Gable that whole thing like are we done with Chad Gable and Sami Zayn now? Are we getting a triple threat? Are they adding Bronson triple Reed threat. to this? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. why? Like, we don't need a triple. Th I got. I don't. Uh, Bronson Reed just a. I don't think he does it for me. I don't really think he does it for anybody. But no. this was supposed to be a a grudge match between Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. That's why Chad mm -hmm. Gable turned on Sami Zayn at the at mm -hmm. the Raw after the you know the the event in, just a few weeks ago at Montreal. Mm -hmm. 
And now, now you're adding Bronson Reed to it for no reason. Like, come on, that, that makes no sense to me. And why couldn't Sami Zayn and Chad Gable be done at Backlash this weekend? Why couldn't you have that on the card? I don't know. And yeah, I, I don't get it. And why is once again, Solo Sokoa and Chad Gable so obsessed with winning when neither of them win? Chad Gable's yeah. literally reprimanding his crew for being losers. When was the last time Chad Gable won a match? I'm I know. I'm very confused on that uh, with both of them. Like Solo right now, you've been having him just beat up Kevin Owens and now he kind of got beat up by Kev. Why are you not having him wrestle matches? I don't care if it's against nobody's. Build yeah. him back the fudge up, Triple H. What are you doing? Make him a monster. I don't care if there's squash matches or whatever you got to do. You know what I yeah. mean? But once again, it's because the draft picks were in the way. I didn't mention, too, that Seven Different Command came out and announced a few things and whatever else. So I did a TikTok about that, about how people are feeling about And every single person said they were for it. So I was. I guess she's not hated as, as much as X and so on want to think. But let's get into the draft. Are you ready? Yes. We're on please. SmackDown. We're kind of whatever. But here's my thing. The draft. For one, it's not a draft. And I think everyone in the world is saying that right now. I've heard some people calling it the Raw and WWE switcheroo and so on. If you're going to, like, you made up a good point. You said, I, I get why Carmelo Hayes was picked number two, because he's the future. And in a draft, you usually pick the future. But here's the thing. That's not what this draft is about. And yeah. so if this draft was about the future, okay, I get it. And if you're saying Carmelo Hayes, and I know, I'm not NXT. saying, okay, yes. It needs to be Raw, SmackDown, each get five picks. We'll do it on a Raw. We'll do it on a Raw. And they'll come out and they'll do their five picks. And we'll make it all important. Make them feel special. NXT will be in the back. If you want to do that, do that. You don't have to switch. A do a draft to switch people around. I think they do it for ratings. But I don't even think these are getting good ratings. No one cares. The draft is dead. Triple H needs to bear it. But here's my thing. Okay. Here's my biggest problem with the draft. And not even the fact that the same people got picked in the same brand. Because that's fine. If you if you have, you know, Seth Rollins, do you really want to lose him? No. So, of course, you're going to pick him early. Here's my thing. You brought up the future. You brought up the draft. If that is true, please explain to me how Carmelo, Kiana James, uh, Dragunov, who else? And Blair Davenport? And Valkyria. Those four, and Valkyria. Those five NXT stars of the future, not Trick Williams, Roxanne Perez. Uh, shoot, the list goes. I mean, there's you have champions. They were allowed to be drafted. Roxanne Perez went on NXT and bitched for not being picked to Raw or SmackDown. So you're going to tell me right now that the future is brighter for Kiana James than it is for Roxanne Perez, like I'm just mind blown. Also, the final testament got picked on Raw, and then the next night went on NXT and said that they're here to rule and win all the titles. So, do you not? <laughs> are, are we done with the brand splitting? Like, all once again, all I know they did this last they just year, and now, yeah, yes. And, and, and here's my thing I'm not dogging Bianca Belair for being number one, I don't want to make it a thing like people, oh, whatever. No, but there's no way in hell that you're gonna tell me Bianca. Jay Uso and Carmelo Hayes are more important to a brand than Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, um, shoot, even the bloodline in general, because you know that in the nutshell, Roman's going to come back to the bloodline. Like there was just bigger people to pick. I actually think Liv Morgan is bigger right now than Bianca Belair in the aspect of what is happening currently. Not all time. Now I'm talking about if you're doing a draft, you're picking right superstars and people will make you money. That's like Raw, Imperium, Gunther. I'm all for it. But Gunther's better than CM Punk. Gunther's better than Drew McIntyre. He's been the hottest. At I don't yeah. see that. That's Jay the Cargill? Jay Cargill ain't hotter than Tiffany Stratton right now, bruv. She went before Kevin Owens. Damage Control went before CM Punk. Damage Control hasn't won a match ever. And I yeah. love this is I love these people. I just don't buy into the whole like let's do Drew like 18th because it'll start up like a rivalry for him to be upset during the night. That doesn't Shinsuke Nakamura. The fact that he got drafted before anybody, that dude does not win. All he does is yeah. freaking lose. Why would you pick him before Naomi? She's hot right now, too. She has a title. You even made up the fact that AJ Styles was fighting for a title. He went like 12th. Yeah. The draft made no sense in any way, shape, or form. It's not a draft. And it just made no sense at all. They should have said, you know, and NXT champs are like not up for grabs or whatever. Like, I like, why would you not take Obafemi? 
Like I don't, I don't. Dragunov was like legitimately, and Carmelo Hayes were the only two that should have been picked, minus other champs or whatever. Our state, we can't take champs, so we're gonna take yeah. everybody else. You know what I mean? No, That's I completely, I I'm completely just, agree. It needs to be done. All of it was bad. Uh, if they're gonna do the draft, it, do it like you said. Have all NXT, and mm-hmm. you know each brand gets five picks, and then treat it like an actual draft. The one thing that I think the draft got right this year was when they okay. showed. Lyra, Val- Lyra Valkyria, you know, <clears throat> the genuine emotions that she had mm-hmm. and getting up and like hugging Shawn Michaels and getting the hat. And when they showed Kiana James doing the same thing and they showed, um, you know, all the other NXT people, you know, dragging off, getting selected and getting the, the like, I thought that was really cool how they did that. Other than that, this draft was atrocious. It was terrible. It was, uh, first of all, you had all these rando legends making these picks that, like, why? Do, I love the Dudley boys. I do. I love them. I'm not even going to get on on the case about why Bully Ray, you know, he, he's on WWE TV while he's hosting Busted Open and ripping AEW. Like, we don't need to he's get into that. He's been on TNA, too, though, and nobody oh, yeah. cared. But yeah. now they care. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. but what does he care about Monday? Like, the the, the roster on Monday Night Raw? And what huh? does Devon care about the roster on Friday Night SmackDown or whatever brand they were picking for? What do they care? And, like, the the... The they a- did back to back nights too. <laughs> yeah. And the APA, like Ron Simmons and, and JBL. What do they care about? Oh, well, I want I'm here to draft for Monday Night Raw and I'm here for Smack. Like, why? Why do you care? And then uh-huh. also they were in the draft rooms. Yeah, they're in the war rooms. And <laughs> at least like treat it like an actual draft and show mm-hmm. us the conversations going on in the war rooms instead of occasionally showing Adam Pierce throwing his hands up that they didn't get somebody that was on their mm-hmm. list. And also have some emotion, like oh, you know, the raw select CM Punk. Then be like, oh man, I can't believe we didn't get CM. Yeah. Punk. Like, and then show us the list, or show us like, okay, you got to cross CM Punk off because you were gonna go for him. And then okay, well in that case, we're gonna draft Drew McIntyre. You know, something like that. Like show us mm-hmm. some like act like make it feel like a draft when people get picked and their names are crossed off. Like make it feel legitimate. And I don't feel like WWE did this at all. So I'm glad you said that because there was one segment where they showed them cross the name out. Like they like wrote it and crossed it out or whatever. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. They already have their cards for the picks. Exactly. So as soon as he picks raw, the other guy never was like, oh, shoot, we need to like phone in to SmackDown because that's not how a draft works. They don't yeah. have one card because they don't know who's being picked. So you can't pick what they Carmella should have Hayes. Done. And what if they both picked Carmella Hayes? Yeah, like what they should have done was, okay, SmackDown will draft first. SmackDown, you have five minutes to make your choice. And then they yes. show us the the war room and you show us mm-hmm. Bully Ray. or And he's like, okay, if they take this person. Why would Bully Ray care? I know, I know. I don't get why he can't. Like, what what, say? Why would what Medusa say? was there for crying out like, yeah. what does she care? And then... Did Tori Wilson was there. Did they use a date? Carmel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there was some what was weird. With that? What was, yeah, that with was that? She that was, was like, weird. Stay away from me, you perv. And then he was like, Mwah. and then she was like, oh. Yeah. Because was wasn't some... she supposedly harassed by men? I was so confused by that. Like, yeah, whole... that was that whole thing was weird. Teddy yeah. Teddy Long was there, which like he okay flubbing every oh he flubbed so many lines. Oh, yeah, he was Tori Wilson. You know, Michelle McCool. Yeah. Like, what do they care about? you know they're not wrestling so what do they care mm-hmm. it was so like explain at least explain why they're why they were selected for the war rooms and why they're back there making the picks show us the strategy okay mm-hmm. nick aldis is leading the charge right he's the gm okay so if they pick this person like show us the conversation mm-hmm. and then like then i'll find him a little bit more believable but mm-hmm. yeah it made no no sense and then i'm gonna have the hot take that i don't think the bloodline should have been drafted at all and the reason why I think that is because number one, last week, the week before on SmackDown, you had Nick Aldis talking to Paul Heyman, and he said, "If if you don't get the bloodline under control, losing isn't going to be the only thing that has consequences around here." And then mm-hmm. they, you know, then they panned around, and then it, the whole side story on SmackDown was the bloodline hasn't been selected. Roman withdrew from the draft, and the bloodline hasn't been selected. <clears throat> Solo Sokoa wanted to know, "Hey, why haven't we been drafted? Where where are we drafted?" Wade Barrett constantly mentioned on commentary, I've really noticed that the bloodline hasn't been drafted. And then the next round, they're selected. I'm like, okay, what was mm-hmm. the point of this story? I think they should have done it to where the, you know, Nick Aldis p- finally put his foot down with the bloodline and said, you guys aren't being picked at all. 
and then you never know when they're going to show up. They show up on SmackDown yeah. and wreak havoc. They show up on Raw and wreak havoc. They show up on the NXT and wreak havoc, and then that's what brings Roman Reigns back eventually to put a stop to it. But, but like, why have that side story? And then why would Nick Aldis, as the general manager who has been a thorn in the side of the bloodline, who's had nothing but run-ins with the bloodline, why would he want them on his draft? I mean, like from, I get it from a business <laughs> standpoint. Like I get it from like mm-hmm. the, the non storyline, like you, of course you want the bloodline, but from mm-hmm. a kayfabe standpoint, you know, Adam Pierce was more excited to get rid of Chelsea green on raw. than Nick Aldis should have been like, oh, we got the bloodline. I don't want them. Like these guys are pain in the ass. Like at least, I don't know, just have some, have yeah. some emotions about it. So, and and not to spoil it later either, but Chelsea Green too. She then shows up on NXT and yeah. is like, "I'm gonna love being here." Wait, huh? Are you on NXT? What? You just got drafted to Smack? I'm so confused. I'm like, "Are you part of it? Are you not?" If they, once again, if they do away with the brand split instantly again, I'm gonna lose my shit because what's the point of wasting our time with drafts if you're never gonna follow it? But last thing too, maybe they just need to make the draft a Peacock special. They don't. They don't I'm get ratings extra for it. Hey. This is a draft. We're doing NXT drafts. We're going to do whatever else. And then we're going to add in a, a WWE shakeup. First, we're going to do the draft. Then we're going to do a shakeup. Two different things. You can watch it. It's a two-hour special on Peacock. You can watch it live or watch it afterwards. Boom. It'll get you extra ratings on Peacock or Netflix if you want to do it for Netflix yeah. next year whatever. And let people tune in to watch it and make it a real draft. The number one pick of Raw is boom. And, and then, then they're like, yeah, dang it. And then they're later, like trying to figure out. Pick. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm here's down. the other thing, too. Here's the other thing, too, with drafts, right? Basketball, football, hockey, whatever, baseball. You don't always draft the best player. You will sometimes, Michael Jordan, you will draft the best eligible person for your needs on your team. The problem is with wrestling, you don't have that. <laughs> other, than, other than boy and girl, there's really yeah. no other needs, right? It's not like you're like, oh, shoot, we got – you know, Carmelo and Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee. And we got all the ricochet. Shoot, we need some big men. So we're going to have to like pick up, you know, who what big men are left. Like that's yeah. not how it works. So you're just picking the best talent, which is why the draft didn't make sense. Because why would you pick these people over other people? Yeah. And then also, if you're not going to have people switching brands, then don't even yeah, announce well, it. Don't even yeah. announce it. Like at least just announce the people that are changing brands. And mm-hmm. I think I would have liked it a little bit more, but yeah. you know, SmackDown selects Cody Rhodes. Ooh, Cody Rhodes is already on SmackDown. You know, like Raw mm-hmm. selects CM Punk. He's already on Raw. You know, uh-huh. like there was hardly, especially the first night on SmackDown. Wasn't it like eighty percent of people stayed yeah. or something? Everybody somewhere stayed there, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, it, and it made made no sense. And mm-hmm. oh yeah, the, but yeah, I'm uh-huh. in full agreement. Put the draft on mm-hmm. Peacock, make it its own little special, and and then treat Monday Night Raw and SmackDown like you would any other Raw and SmackDown. So I agree. I agree. What a week in WWE. Ugh. I'm I'm predicting that AEW will probably have a better week this week. Huh? We'll see tomorrow. So. We'll talk about it. We'll see. Good for them. All right. Well, speaking of NXT wasn't atrocious. Let's get into some NXT. It was spring break in night two. It wasn't spring break in night one, but I don't think they wanted it to be this year. Like you mentioned, because of the draft, because people got picked, they had to kind of take away from that. But let's get into it. Trick Williams is out to brag about being the new world champion. This is this is now the whoop that trick era or the whoop that era. I forgot what he <laughs> said, but it's one of them. Uh, Lash Legend then comes out for some reason. They flirt for about 15 minutes, and then she has an envelope that is the key to him losing his title. Bum, bum, bum. A title shot against Homeboy. I don't think Noam Dar is next up to win. But all right. Obafemi defends his title against Ivar. Wesley returns again. I feel like Wesley's always returning. The uh, <laughs> hell he's he's like a guy that used to do a podcast with us. He doesn't really do anything but return. Yeah, uh, the yeah, hell. <laughs> the comeback. Yeah, hell, the, the comeback. It's the comeback. Comeback uh, be hell. bigger than the step back. <laughs> Oh, Thea God. Hale defeats JC Jade. After the match, Henley, who's still super fine, attacks Hale. The OC won a match. Ava announces that a ladder match at Battleground in the UFC Apex Center. I don't know why that's a big deal, nor why I should care. Uh, will happen for the first ever women's North American champion. Once again, HBK. Bravo to you and NXT for having a secondary women's championship. It's deserving. But first, 12 wrestlers will compete in a qualifying matches. Ridge Holland defeats Sean Spears. Why the hell did they bring Sean Spears back? The final testament will win all titles in NXT. Axiom and Frazier defeat the AOP. 
let, let me let me let me rewind that. The final test have been announced that they will win all the titles in NXT. <laughs> Axiom and Frazier defeat AOP. All right. Rich mm -hmm. Holland checks in on Thea Hale and then is recruited into the Chase U, I guess. I don't know what happened. Uh, Metaphor revealed that the envelope will be announced next week. What's in it? Bum, bum, bum. Maybe Kryptonite. In the main event, Lola Vice defeats Natalia. After the match, Ava announces that Chelsea Green will wrestle Roxanne Perez for the title to close the show. And that's spring break in bruh at night. Two, what you got? <sighs> Man, when you read it like that, it makes it sound like it was not a good episode. But right, actually, I always feel like all my like reviews it actually, always bring shit down instead of bring it up. It, yeah, but this one, <sighs> okay, like, what are we doing? Like, I, I don't like Chelsea Green on NXT the day after. I, I know that the rosters aren't locked in, but. They are next week, and she's competing for the. Uh, is it NXT next week, or th did they announce next week, or just say she's getting a shot? Yeah, maybe. I was trying to but either, but either way, yeah. either way, the draft is like she shouldn't be there. Like she, she mm -hmm. shouldn't be competing. She's not. On, she's been selected to SmackDown. So why is she, like why are you already ruining mm -hmm. your your brand split? You know, not even twenty four hours after the fact. Um, if uh -huh. it is next week, or even at the next pay per view for NXT. Either way, the the rosters are locked in this coming Monday, so yep. doesn't make any sense. And then, um, yeah, like they try to do the NXT Underground thing, and like I don't ever want to see that anymore. Right? Um, fake fighting is not good. Wrestling no. isn't fake fighting. Wrestling is wrestling. Fake fighting is so stupid. The kicks, yeah. the like, the moves. The oh my god, yeah, get out of my face yeah. with that shit. And, yeah, and I like that they had Shayna Baszler involved, but still, mm -hmm. it it because she's a real legit fighter. But even then, you remember it's when was they Lola did... Vice? Lola Vice is a real yeah, fighter. She fought in Strike Force and so on. So, but, but if you Natalia remember, is it? if you remember Shayna Baszler versus Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam, where they tried oh. to have a real MMA style fight and it was horrible. Oh. We don't need to have that stuff in the WWE. No. So get rid of these underground matches. Mm -hmm. Um. And and like you said, why did they bring back Ridge Holland or uh, 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 the other guy, Sean Spears? Um, Sean Spears. Why did they bring him back? Like, what was Ridge Holland too? Why is he on NXT? When like, <laughs> but Sean Spears. Like, what's the point of him being back? Mm -hmm. I, I I don't get it. And then mm -hmm. Wes Lee. Like, I'm excited to see Wes Lee back, but in my opinion, he's somebody who should have been drafted to the main roster. Right. What's the point of still being in NXT? Like and he's gonna beat Obafemi. Like get out of my face with that. No, he's not. Yeah. Uh, and and once again, trick, awesome beginning, this and that. And then we're gonna have him. I mean, maybe I'm not so against him in the Dar. I mean, we gotta have him beat somebody. But I thought his thing shouldn't have been interrupted by Lash Legend. I thought we could have went a different route. But I guess people are and digging like, them to flirting all the yeah, time. What, I think they're like a, they're a real life couple. And right, I think, I know, yeah. and th and then uh, yeah, like the whole Kit Kat reference, and oh, I better break me off a piece of that. Like, yeah, that's not that's I don't know. Like, I'm not a fan. And of wouldn't he be stuff, a king size but... Snickers? Why are you a Kit Kat? I don't because yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't. Uh -huh. I don't I'm like, it. girl, I'm a I'm a family size Snickers, bro. Like, at least come up a little bit harder. But my my funniest part of this whole thing was the fact that the final testament. Oh yeah, and a promo. Right before the match, saying we're here to win all the gold, and then they go to lose. You cannot have re stop cutting promos where people are announcing their future goals to only lose instantly. That doesn't so make dumb. any sense. You're not and then again, rule. and again, there was no. I don't remember unless I missed something. I don't remember there being any explanation as to why the final testament was there when they just got drafted, or same thing with Chelsea Green mm -hmm. when she just got drafted. Like, why were they there? And, you know, same thing with Natalia or Shayna Baszler. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I get they were there to help with the NXT Underground They stuff, were announced last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but like, again, you just had the draft the night before. And Final Testament coming to Raw. They're switching brands. Probably a mm -hmm. fresh start for them. And then they go 24 hours later and lose on NXT. How am I supposed to take them seriously on the main roster? Thank I know you. that I know NXT and and the main roster are kind of two separate universes. But they but <laughs> but at least like with Johnny Gargano, he was winning on NXT and losing mm -hmm. on the main roster. AOP yeah. and and Karrion Cross, they're just losing everywhere they go. Yeah. Doesn't matter where they go. So how am I supposed to take them seriously? On Monday Night Raw? 
Yeah, if you're losing on the developmental show, uh, you're not winning on SmackDown, dude. And SmackDown's the A show, to be honest with you. So yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. And it is what it is. I'm hoping that next week we're gonna at least they try to push storylines. At least they didn't have the draft in the way. We still got Trick moving forward. We still got the announcement of the women's NXT North American title, and obviously Sol Rook is gonna win that shit. So, I hope so. we have some future yeah. moving ahead. I like it. And it, I actually, if Chelsea Green wins the title. I love Roxanne Perez. I love her Hilter, but give me Chelsea Green all day, but I want her. And then she needs to be like Mandy Rose and she needs to go and rebuild herself up because she is probably top five most talented females in the WWE, but oh, she gets yeah. treated like, but she gets treated like shit. So, oh, and I don't just yeah. mean by looks because her look is, she's gorgeous, Oh yeah. but I'm talking like in ring ability, her character, everything about her just works. She needs, she needs to get treated better. So if she needs and, to get Mandy Rose, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But it ain't happening. But so. then, you know, but if she wins and Roxanne Perez, then do a trade or something. Say, okay, we'll yeah. give you, you know, you know, we'll get SmackDown. We'll give you Roxanne Perez in exchange for Chelsea Green since Chelsea Green won the title. And or, Piper. Yeah, or Pe and Piper Niven too. Yeah, but yeah. but either way, like at least like explain it. Don't just do away with your stupid brand split. Like not even mm -hmm. a week after the draft. Like it makes no sense. Yeah, unless NXT is not part of it, I don't go. But they are because they drafted people. So exactly. I don't know. Yeah, and then <laughs> last thing, this episode it felt weird without Dragon off there. It felt weird without Carmelo Hayes. It felt like something uh -huh. was missing. And you know, I know that. Like it was time for those guys to move up and I'm excited to see what the future has in store for some of these other guys. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not having those guys there, like it's time for some of these other dudes and, and girls to step up because it felt it felt like something was missing. Like it felt like mm -hmm. the their big stars were missing. Yeah, they were. But this is usually the time they're supposed to bring in Chelsea Greens and other people to kind yeah. of build. This is when Dolph Ziggler came in. This is when you need to bring some people in to kind of build the new crop of of young talent. So. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, that was our weekend review. While you're setting up, I'll let everybody know to don't forget to tune in, keep subscribing, keep following us. And tomorrow we have our AEW edition where we will cover all things collision, rampage, dynamite, rampage, and then a <laughs> segment as well. So we're going to be doing a whole bunch of reviewing and we'll be going over some comments by yours favorite little man tony oh, khan because yeah. oops Napoleon. he did it again oh yeah and i just cannot believe people supporting it but we'll get there tomorrow so don't forget to tune in i'm sure it'll be a hot episode between us two but now and it's then, time and oh, should we go ahead. Oh. should we announce the other segment that we're gonna do too um starting tomorrow? oh yes yeah go ahead go ahead oh so, yeah we're gonna starting tomorrow we're gonna do a new thing and it might be a separate video we may add it on to one of the aew or wwe videos we don't really know yet but we're gonna start choosing we're going to go through the week of wrestling and pick a winner. So who do we think, what show, what brand, what company do we think won the week in wrestling? So what was the best show of the week? What did we like about it? And then, you know, the shows that didn't win, maybe we'll explain why they didn't win or what they can do a little bit better. But um, so stay tuned for that. It's going to probably be a new thing that we're going to do. And that's a lot of shows. That's Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Rampage, Collision, and Dynamite. So yeah. which one will win? So we'll see. Stay tuned. We will see. I can tell you right now it ain't going to be Raw or SmackDown. Oh, All no. right. Are you ready? <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> NXT was already better than those two. So we already oh, yeah. got them out of the way. So we're starting hot in our first one ever. All right. Let's get into it. <clears throat> it's prediction time. Before it ever happens, it's a prediction. <laughs> Lean in close. Take notes. Listen. Cause they about to point it out quickly All the things that you didn't see It's getting called like plays at the line of scrimmage You can take it to the bank The dudes ain't tripping They've been seeing what's coming for a good minute It's prediction time Yeah, let's get it Also, really quick, before we jump into our Backlash predictions, next week we're going to start a new rating system that we're going to announce as well. We, Me and, me and Ryan got to fine-tune it. I have some other ideas with how we're going to do it, but we're going to do a Dave Meltzer-type ranking system oh, yeah. that better. We're going to start every PLE, every pay-per-view. We're going to do every match, and we're going to rank them. But we haven't figured out how we're going to rank them yet. It's not going to be like Dave, but we'll get into that. But so tune into yeah. that, too, because that'll be another segment we're going to do after every single one when we are going to yeah. do a new ranking system and we got to find a way that we will keep them up at all times so we can go back and look at them as well so we're going to fine tune that so we can we got this. go back yeah. in the history of what we 
you know, like and don't like. But anyway, let's get into this. This will probably take about a minute and a half to two yeah. minutes. So, so five matches, five, five matches, and mo I I think every one of these are predictable. But I have a feeling that Ryan's going to try to step out of the box again to try oh, to of course, like I did with my crazy kooky idea of somebody yeah. winning. So <laughs> that's, I think MJF is going to cash in his briefcase oh. that he won <laughs> on the weekend, and he's going to cash in the, Cody. the Joker's wild or whatever the, the... Yeah. <laughs> from Impact. He's, we're just <laughs> mixing all what was the we're like, what was the aew oh no one? joker wild is aew yeah uh, feast or whatever feast or fire yeah 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 all right let's gosh all right let's get in it randy orton and kevin owens versus the bloodline meaning tom tonga and solo suit koa who do you got <sighs> my gut says kevin owens and randy orton but my heart says Tamatanga and Solo they Solo Sokoa has to freaking win this match. Like otherwise, like this whole thing is stupid. Like, oh yeah, you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna win and then just just to lose. And losing has consequences, except for me, because I can't win anything. <laughs> so but I'm also but I wouldn't put it past the WWE to have Kevin Owens and Randy oh. Orton get the win. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the bloodline, Tamatanga and Solo Sokoa. They need it, and Orton and Owens will be fine without it. I want to state how I don't understand how the pay-per-view after WrestleMania is the most worthless pay-per-view, and it always has been. Why is the pay-per-view before WrestleMania not? It's the one after, and that makes no sense to me because oh, this no. should be this should be big time. It should be all titles, banger after banger, getting those storylines going, building new people, and instead we have the Bloodline versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. I'm going the Bloodline. If if the Bloodline loses, then shut up with it there's no way you get out of that then there's no, no. point what's what's the hell yeah I, kevin owens is laying down like he always does and he's taking that pin there's no other way and there's part of me actually i'll save it i'll save it for later i'll save it for all later. right all right now next match we got the kabuki warriors defending their female or women's tag team titles against bianca belair and jade cargill why are the titles changing you go ahead Oh, he's I, not. He's gone. I don't know. I oh, feel like no I feel way. like this is when somebody's gonna turn. I, I I know I say this every time with Bianca mm -hmm. that she's gonna turn on Jade Cargo, but this feels like the perfect opportunity. But I I just at the same I'm I'm gonna pick Jade Cargo and Bianca to win. Um, I think it's damage controls. Time is done. The Kabuki, the Oscar and Kyrie Sane have done everything they can. They want to get gold on Jade. It makes sense. So. And, and her and Bianca, maybe the maybe the turn happens when they lose the titles. Maybe the turn happens a little bit further down the road. Let them build themselves as a tag team for the the inevitable turn between one of them. So, I'm if it's not happening tonight, if it's not happening at Backlash, which there's still a part of me that thinks it might, I think it's going to happen later. So I'm picking Jade and Bianca to win. No, the Kabuki Warriors are so going to get over on SmackDown on these two, and then they're going to lose. They're, the Kabuki, Kabuki Warriors are. I mean, all women's tag team champions are garbage, but this has been a garbage, pointless run. It's time to give up those belts. They are hyping Bianca Belair every second they can. They're not going to do that without a title. Her and Jade are the next big things. They have nothing for them to do. This reminds me they of They were both Sasha. number one draft picks, too. A hundred percent. This is yeah. all in writing. This reminds me of Sasha and Naomi when they had these two huge superstars but had nothing for them to do, so they gave them the titles. Hopefully, we don't get the same ending. But nonetheless, they're winning the belts, and hopefully, finally... We could do something. This is a perfect way to get Jade in. She only has to wrestle half the time, if not less. Get her used to the ring. Get her used to WWE work. Brilliant idea. Next hand, champs. All right. All the rest of Oh, these are all title matches, but one. All right. We got Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton for the women's championship. Who you got? I <laughs> it's too soon for Bailey to lose the title. As much as I love what Tiffany Stratton's doing right now, and she's probably the hottest thing going in WWE, I think now it, it's still too soon for Bailey to drop the title. So I think Bailey's going to retain. Yeah, I would, I'm going to say Bailey pins Naomi, and we finally get that whole bicker. You know, uh, Bianca was right; can't trust Bailey. Naomi's going to maybe turn heel. Yeah. Or, I don't know, but I got Bailey pinning naomi keeping the strap i'm telling you this is going to be the most uneventful pay-per-view of all time. oh yeah it already is and mm -hmm. i feel bad for our friends in france who yeah have been looking forward to a ple coming their way and the one right after wrestlemania they're 
they booked this a year ago and they're like, oh man, this is going to be an epic, great, epic show. Probably going to get Roman there. And this is what we get. It's they get the bloodline. <laughs> yeah. Bloodline 2.0, but the <laughs> wish the team move version of the bloodline, but, um, <laughs> but still, I mean, a five match PLE and like, yeah, they're all predictable matches. I think so. But yeah. let's see, because the next one, I think it's not going to be predictable because I think someone's going to try to pull a rabbit out of a hat. We got Damian Priest versus Jey Uso. Heavyweight championship match. Remember Jey Uso just got the comeuppance. Yep. Remember that. Remember who you got. So I think this is the one. I see one of two things happening. I see Jey Uso winning in taking the belt off of priest and becoming the new world heavyweight champion because the judgment day did not come to the aid of Damian priest on raw Damian priest was like, you know, I don't need you guys. You guys need me from now on. Just stay out of my business. You got that. And they're all like, yeah, 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 we got it. We got it. So now I think Damian priest selfishness is going to cost him. And it's, and then he's going to be like, where were you guys? Why didn't you come out and help me? But he told us not to. So I, I could see that happening, but then I also see, the bloodline, Tamatanga and Solo Sokoa, with the new addition, Jacob Fatu, coming out mm. and costing Jay the World Heavyweight Championship. Jay's about to win. He's about to do the yeet, the five star yeet splash, or um, he's going to do the yeet super kick, or he's going to do a, he's going to hit him with the the yeet bottom or whatever. But they, he's going to go for the pin. <laughs> One, two, yeet, and um, out comes out comes the bloodline to beat down Jay Uso, and that's I think they're gonna. So I'm I, I think that theory is more likely than the first one. So I'm gonna say Jay Uso loses because of the the bloodline interferes, costs him the title, and um, Jacob Fatu makes his debut. All right, I like it. Priest is winning the end. They're not putting anything on Jay Uso, just like LA Knight. Saying yeah does not make a man a champion. Saying yeet does not make a man a champion. So just because he says yeet 8,000 times and people dance to his music does not make him a champ. Damian Priest wins. I think the bloodline comes out, ends up costing Priest almost. Jey Uso is about to win, and then the bloodline comes out and helps. And then we finish off Damian Priest bitching and saying, all you guys do is cost me, and ending the bloodline, or ending the judgment day, which is stupid. But I... I don't know why the judgment day didn't just get drafted somewhere else. You could have just ended it that way. And yeah, I know. Them up. That's just why. What are we going to do with them after? So Yeah, that's why yeah. I see one of those two scenarios happening. But I think the more likely one is Jey Uso losing because of the bloodline. Yeah. All right, let's get into why Paris is paying all their money. John Cena, Cody Rhodes <laughs> versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Who do you got? Cody Rhodes. I mean, he's not he's not dropping the belt already. I mean, no, I think this is going to be an awesome match. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, AJ, AJ's just there to put him over at mm-hmm. this point. I feel like that's kind of his M.O. these days in WWE is to put guys over. And mm-hmm. it's a good first opponent for Cody Rhodes. But um, yeah, I think Cody Cody's definitely winning. He's not they're not having him end a thirteen hundred day championship reign to lose at backlash so no, no, no. <laughs> cody's not losing yeah. anytime soon cody's keeping this oh, no. for like a year triple h loves long reigns cody's beating aj this will be the match of the night they'll bring it they'll have 35 minutes and go hard and maybe maybe 45 minutes who knows but it ends with cody rhodes holding the title and then them kissing or hugging in honor of dusty after the match so yeah. there you go do you think uh before we wrap up do you think yeah with this card only mm-hmm. having five matches do you think this is when we get some answers to all these QR codes that are coming and Uncle Howdy makes his debut or return with the white? I mean, obviously they... it's the new Wyatt yeah. family. Yeah. Is that but it, does that happen at Backlash or do they hold off a little bit more on that? I, I mean, feel like could. with with this Why kind not? of card, like they gotta have something big happen. Something and I feel like that that would be perfect. But and they do it, but the, but they do it like against Cody, or they do it after like why yeah. Bray did, and it just has nothing yeah. to do with the match. Do They're gonna roll the, the stupid, yeah. the stupid little logo, and then it's gonna be like, sure, sure. I don't know. I once again, just like you, I'm against this idea. I don't want it at all. I think no, I don't let want Bray it Wyatt either. let him rest in peace. It was his ideas. I don't care if it's a brother or not. I wouldn't let 
my ideas just give to Mason because they were mine. Now they're his, my son. So he just gets to take over everything I built. Doesn't make sense. It's, we're two different people. I, I don't believe in any of this. I think it's a cheap way of making yeah. money off of somebody that WWE refused to make money off of when he was alive. So True. because they buried that dude, that dude should have been a bigger star than he was. And I'll never forgive WWE for the way they treated him. And I used to say that on this podcast all the time. Oh, yeah. I all always the time. Say, what the heck is going on? So the Goldberg yeah, I'm not for that it. man at, at- uh, the pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia, I'll never forgive them for. Made no him sense. Him and Seth in the Hell in the... This guy lost yeah. a Hell in the Cell match by having too many things put on top of him. Yeah. Mick Foley was thrown off of a cage in an attempted murder, and that match continued. It was a, this it was a no had... contest in the Hell in a Cell, too. It was no contest yeah. in a Hell in a Cell match. Yeah, that Stupid. was the day. He was buried, all right. That was it. Yeah. But anyway, that's our week of WWE Review. We will be back, as I said, tomorrow for AEW, and that'll be a fun fun episode i'm sure we'll get some heat going on between the two of us we'll see what happens maybe not against each other but just fired up about the ridiculousness oh, yeah. that is of tony khan <laughs> so as always tune in subscribe i'm hbd Denton on all social medias if you'd like to hear me and see my beautiful beard that girls at wrestlemania's enjoy well, uh, and with down. me as always oh yeah they do <laughs> with me as always is the man the legend it's ryan enjoys wrestling go follow us on social media at two dudes with attitudes on tiktok at two dudes pc on x go follow me on all the social media platforms out there and then if you're listening to us on spotify or apple appreciate the support and leave us a five star Mm -hmm. rating and review um and then subscribe to our youtube at two dudes with attitudes we're blowing up there um you know this is going to be our year man 2024 is the year of the dudes and we appreciate all the love and support from everyone two dudes, two dudes look attitudes. back we out let's go it's the two dudes and our attitudes ruthless aggressively speaking so let's do this we're riding and didn't they hit they get your attention the five-star broadcast you start to the ending whether it's the e or it's all e the two dudes with the attitudes to bring the heat get the point yeah it's on time to lock in listen to the podcast where they get it popping